A few years ago, I sustained severe trauma and a few months later moved to Breckenridge, Colorado. A friend of mine who had relocated from DC to Denver gave me the advice, in Colorado, gear is currency. People here don't care who you know or who you worked for. You're better off to talk about if you ski, bike, hike, or paddle. As humans, we are hardwired for connection. It is a basic human need. It's a survival tactic based on the belief of strength in numbers. And connection has the ability to make or break our human experience. Every day we exchange currencies. Rather than exchange money, we exchange stories, relevant life experiences to a bunch of external and internal factors. Externally, we have geography. Having lived in six countries and 14 cities, each one of them has their own unique currency to connect. In Milan, food, fashion, travel are all currencies for connection. In Cleveland, mention LeBron, safe bet. Good to go. <laughs> and in DC, it's what do you do? Who do you know? I'm not kidding, this is a first date question, and it's 2020, so it's not you're sitting at dinner with your potential new match, who knows, and your appetizers are arriving and your career comes up. No, this is on Tinder, The League, Hinge, Coffee Meets Bagel, okay, keep it if that's still a thing. First message, hi. Second message, what do you do? Geography also attributes to language, and I don't mean that I speak Italian when I'm in Italy or I speak German when I'm in Germany. I mean that if you go to Boston, you will hear someone say that's wicked cool. If you're in Northern California, that's hella cool. In Colorado, I can say I'm stoked on something in front of executive board members, and that's okay. If I say that in front of US Congress, I'm gonna get some looks. <laughs> Moreover, we have audience. An audience can be one person or it could be a group of people. When I first moved to Breck, I worked with a lot of people five to 10 years my junior, both in age and life experience. To give you an idea of just how vastly different our lives were, these were people who could ski all day, party all night, and functionally work the next morning. I'm at a point in my life where I look at wine, I think about email, and I now have a hangover. <laughs> so we were unable to connect, and that's okay. We're unable to connect with everyone in the world, that's fine, but I felt alone. And you know what we do when we feel alone? We fit in, the antithesis of connection. I'd like to throw it back to Lindsay Lohan in her prime for one of my favorite movies, Mean Girls. And Lindsay Lohan plays the character of Katie Heron. Katie Heron moves from Africa to Chicago and changes everything about herself to fit in. From on Wednesdays, she wears pink, to failing math, so Aaron Samuels would like her. Failing math. One of the reasons we may choose to fit in rather than connect, whether it's unintentional or not, is because of weak internal currencies. Internally, we exchange time. We represent ourselves from the past, from the present, and with wishful thinking from the future. Six years ago, one of my best friends had a traumatic brain injury, and the two of us often grieve for our pre-trauma selves. When we meet new people, we grapple with, do we introduce you to the pre-trauma version of ourself or who we are today? The challenge is we often feel that the pre-trauma version of ourself would thrive in this new environment, which is exactly how I felt when I first moved to Breck. I understood pre-trauma Ashley would excel here. And she did. She got me through round one of multiple variations of connection. She got the invite to whatever activity or experience it was that someone else had suggested. But what happened was, is present Ashley, the one with trauma, showed up. Pre-trauma Ashley said, yes, I'd love to ski with you. And Ashley with trauma had an anxiety attack on top of the mountain. Or she was crying in the bathroom at the bar. It's very difficult to connect time if you also have a weak internal currency based on your mind-body connection. To better understand what this means, I'd like you to close your eyes. This is a virtual event, so no one can see you. It's okay. Close your eyes. You have masks on, too, so we really can't see anything. And I want you to think of an experience. Tap into a memory that brings you pure joy. It might be your kid laughing, the smell of cookies. You got a new PR on Strava. This is my new favorite thing. And now, instead of that memory bringing you joy, you might even have a smile on your face right now, it induces rage or profound sadness, or you might even feel numb. This was my life for 16 months, and sometimes still is today. My conversations between my mind and body can sometimes sound like this. Hey, we're invited to go skiing. This is gonna be awesome. 
And then my body will say, oh no, we're at DEF CON 1, imminent threat. And my brain will go, no, no, we've done this a few hundred times, it's gonna be great. We're definitely going to have fun today, totally awesome. And my body will say, no, I've already induced your, your sympathetic nervous system. Fight, flight, or freeze, please. You choose, I don't care, but we are in survival mode. It is exhausting to talk to yourself that way all day. And I can tell you that it is nearly impossible, if not impossible, to connect externally if you're internally disconnected. So what do we do? I wish I had an algorithm for you. I wish I had a play-by-play -play to give you. I can tell you what I did. I left Breckenridge. I moved in with my parents in Cleveland. I was checked into an intensive outpatient program for post-traumatic stress. I did puzzles every single day. I learned about EMDR and tapping. I went on walks. I cried. I screamed. I checked out every book I possibly could from the Cleveland Public Library System on neurology and post-traumatic stress, so much so I've given myself a minor in psychology. <laughs> so I can tell you it takes a lot of work to reconnect internally. But what happened was is that I came back to Breckenridge and my internal currency was now so strong, I was able to recognize the external currencies available to me. Rather than talk about what I used to do professionally or LeBron, I would talk about skiing or yoga or paddleboarding or the road bike I was saving up for. But I did it in a way that still honored my internal currency. If someone who I'd never skied with before invited me to ski, I might say, I would love to ski with you, but I also have post-traumatic stress, and sometimes if I find that I'm alone in the woods, I have an anxiety attack. Is it cool if we ski some blues? I have yet to have an invitation rescinded because I've said that. That would be very rude. Moreover, I chose a different audience. Rather than hang out with 19-year-olds and their highly functional livers, I hung out with yoga students. Yogis often want to learn, and sometimes they're healing from something themselves. And all of a sudden, I was fostering a community. So my challenge to you is, is the next time that you feel alone or slightly off, there's a disconnect going on for a period of time, take a moment to evaluate your internal currencies and see what you can do to strengthen them. It is an exploration process. And if those are doing great, notice the external currencies available to you so that you may have the opportunity to achieve connection's ultimate goal of acceptance. <laughs>